Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of Back to the Basics Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. so blue thank you Lord for the sparrows that sing who make such sweet melody for rivers that flow the rain and the snow thank you Lord for being a friend so for giving my sad heart cheer For holding my hand when I could not stand Thank you, Lord For giving your life for me On the cross of Calvary For taking my place, your mercy and grace Thank you, Lord. The Bible says that as we offer thanksgiving to God, it's like a sacrifice to Him that glorifies God. I want to glorify God as much as I can. For my home and family, for life's joys, Lord, you've given to me. For the shoes on my feet and plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord, for the church where I worship and pray. For the freedom that I have today. Sweet spirit, I feel your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and making me whole. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for 
for saving my soul and making me whole. Thank you, Lord. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. still as she made her way to Jesus she stumbles through the tears that made her blind she felt such pain some spoke in anger her folks whisper there's no place here for her kind still on she came the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of Like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. You was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. And I spent my days, poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I found. Until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch so now i'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of i've been forgiven and that's why i love him so much and i've come to pour my praise on him like all
I want to welcome you to this broadcast of A Fresh Start, sponsored by Back to the Basics Ministries. And I'm Bobby Mullins, and I'm the Executive Director of Back to the Basics Ministries. And it is my privilege to be able to host and preach on this program. In addition to my work with Back to the Basics Ministries, I'm also the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi, which is located at 625 Highway 51 South out of Memphis. It's about 13 or 14 miles from the I-440 or I-45 I interchange. You go south uh, toward Jackson, Mississippi, get off at exit 284, which is the Nesbitt Road, North Hernando, Pleasant Hill exit. Go the four-way stop a few yards down, turn left, and we're about two miles on the right. You have to go underneath a new I-69, or it's been new in the last few years, which now goes toward Tunica. But we're in an octagon-shaped building. We have our services at 10.30 on Sunday morning, at 6 o'clock on Sunday night, and we have a prayer time at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. And we'd love to have you come and visit with us at Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando if you live in the Memphis area or if you're visiting there. Now for our regular viewers, we thank you that many of you give to help support uh, having this television broadcast. We could not do it if uh, you didn't faithfully give to our ministry. And there are a couple ways you can do that. You can go to the website, www.drbobbymullins.com and look for the donate link. Or you can write a check to Back to the Basics Ministries, P.O. Box 32486, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37930. We are a 501c3 nonprofit approved organization by the IRS, so any donation that you give to our ministry is tax deductible. And I tell you, friends, there's no gift too small and there's no gift too large. Thank you for helping us to be able to present how to have those fresh starts in life that we all need at some time. Now, we've spent uh, some time in recent programs on the book of Jonah. And in chapter 1... That's the book, that's the chapter running away from God. Chapter 2 is returning again to God. Chapter 3 is revival according to God. Chapter 4 is rebelling angrily or reacting angrily against God. I'm sorry to say Jonah had to get a second chance with the Lord because after God used him to help bring about one of the greatest revivals in history in Nineveh, Jonah got upset again. See, that doesn't remind us of ourselves, does it? And then I jokingly say, I also preach a message on chapter 5 of Jonah, and there's no chapter 5, but I title that then responding appropriately to God. Because the fact that Jesus mentioned Jonah a couple of times in positive light, even using Jonah as an example of what Christ was going to do. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, three nights God would would die and after three days be, Jesus would die and after three days be resurrected. I know that Jonah eventually had a good ministry again for the Lord in addition to what we see in the book of Jonah. But I ask at the end of the last program, are you running from God? And you know when people leave God or run from Him, they normally go about as far away as they can and they think the route to Tarshish, which was as far as Jonah could go from Nineveh, they think it's easier. And uh, I imagine that a lot of us have a Tarshish out there somewhere. And it's that place where we think we can minister as effectively as we could at Nineveh. But when we go to Tarshish and God has called us to Nineveh, we go without the blessing of God. And the result is Ichabod meaning the glory of God has departed. And I can tell you there's nothing sadder to see when somebody has had the touch of God on their life, but then they rebel and Ichabod becomes what describes their life. You know, the storm ceased when Jonah acknowledged his rebellion and let be done what he think, you know, let, let it be done what God needs to do. And if you're running from God, 
he doesn't have to find you, friends, because he's never lost you. He knows exactly where you are. So what happened? Jonah told the, the men on that ship, he said, throw me overboard and the storm will cease. Well, those men thought that would be like murder throwing him overboard. Jonah thought it would be suicide. That would end it for him. But verse 17 of chapter 1 says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And going on into chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed. Amen. What great words in the Bible. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. And out of the belly of hell, it was like being in hell, being in the belly of that fish, I cried, and thou heardest my voice. For you had cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All the billows and the waves passed over me. And then I said, I am cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. By the way, in that prayer, Jonah knew the Bible. He, he quotes from the Psalms maybe about numerous times, 15 times I think I, I'd read. But if not that many, he quoted from Psalms several times. So he knew the book of Psalms. And he said, The waters surrounded me, even to the soul, the depths closed round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou brought upon my life, brought my life from corruption. O Lord, my God. You're getting right there, Jonah, when you're acknowledging God. And when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in unto you, into your holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto you, O Lord, with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord in verse 10, and the Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah upon dry ground. Chapter 1, running away from God. Chapter 2, returning again to God. I'm so thankful for second chances. Some of you may be thankful for second chances that you've had in your marriage or in some relationship or other ways where you've gotten a second chance to do something and get it right. Well, God is the God of the second chance. And he gave Jonah a second chance. He said he had called him to do something, to go to Nineveh, to cry against it, to preach a message of repentance. And God did so. But Jonah had to get to the point. Not only God gave him a second chance, but Jonah changed. That Jonah got things right in his life that needed to be right. So he was thrown overboard in the midst of a sea. There needed to be somebody there to rescue him. And what actually happened with the great fish that swallowed Jonah, and he lived through it, that rescued him. Now it wasn't a luxury liner. He didn't have the comfort he would have had on that other ship, but eventually the, the, the fish got Jonah to the shore, vomiting him out, and he was right on dry ground. That was the second <laughs> way that he traveled, ship, second ship he was on. But as we think about returning to God, we find Jonah in the belly of the west, uh, fish. We know that Jonah is alive in conscience because it implies in verse 1. We already mentioned that his prayer is full of the Psalms indicating that he had stored the word of God in his heart. Running away from God got Jonah in a predicament where he had a lot of time to think about it. He couldn't go his way any longer. He had to go wherever that great fish went. It wasn't a pleasant and comfortable place there in the belly of that fish. And Jonah did some soul searching. And the suffering servant decided that it was time to become the submissive servant. Jonah wasn't dead, but he may as well have been. And in his distress, he called to God. 
And you know, that's usually when we call on God, isn't it, for too many people. But it was the right thing to do in this situation. To pray. Jonah prayed unto his Lord. You see, apart from God, our lives will be and never can be anything but distress and despair. We may have moments of glimmer and joy and excitement, but they're only for a moment. You see, the purpose of man is to rest in fellowship with God, but it's our choice. And prayer is the key to open the door to restore broken fellowship and to return again unto God. The book of Jonah, the book of starting all over again. The title of this TV program, A Fresh Start, because at some time we all need a fresh start. And what a great example of someone who needed a fresh start in Jonah. And so Jonah comes before God in chapter 2 when he's in the belly of that fish. And it's a prayer of repentance, rejoicing, and restoration. You see, friends... When we need to get right with God, when we need to get right in a relationship with other people, so often we want to point, well, if they would do that, no, it needs to start right here. I tell couples when they come to me and, you know, they're looking to get married, they say, I believe I found the right person. And I tell them, well, you're halfway there because you want to find the right person. But even as important as in finding the right person is being the right person. God does, you know, God wants us to get married and all, but God's concern is you, me, that we're right in our hearts. And so a lot of times when things have happened wrong, we need to repent if if we were the cause of something or part of it. And so Jonah's prayer began with repentance. He remembered from where he had fallen. Jonah knew exactly where he had gotten out of the will of God. I sometimes share with people when you're trying to start over again and you go back to find that spot where you think you got out of God's will. And as much as you can, if you can correct it, then you try to get things right in your life. But you know, some things you can't completely correct like they were. But try to get them back as right as much as possible and at least get things in your right, in your life, get them right emotionally and mentally and spiritually. Jonah remembered from where he was fallen and the result that came. I mean, he said it was like being in hell, like being in the belly of hell. It was as if he had died, but he was still alive. Oh, I can't think of anything. I mean, in that that well, he wasn't getting up and walking around. He was he couldn't move at all. That would be horrible, you know, to to be like that. But it, it it it's what it took for him to get right with God. What does it take for you? Maybe God's had to deal with you in the past, and you know, believe me, I tell folks sometimes. You know, we, uh, I've had to tell people as a pastor, I said, you know, if I was the one who disciplined you, uh, you might feel after God gets through with you that you wish I'd have disciplined you. Because God's always going to do exactly what it takes, and He knows what that is. So you see, He remembered from where He was fallen. He was remorseful for His failure. He admitted His error. He acknowledged that God was His life and escape. And he rejected what had caused him to fall and he renewed his commitment to God. It was abandoned in his life. I read recently in Oswald Chambers, my utmost voice house, he uses that word abandoned to God. I remember, I love that word abandoned. It means to just get out there and, and do it as if that's all that matters in life. Do the best you can. When Johnny Majors first came as the head coach to the University of Tennessee, I remember he, he would say, I want those boys to play with reckless abandon. I know what he meant. Man, just wear, go out to the ball. Give it your best. Give it, you know, every minute make it count. And I eventually got in 
my Christian life, I wanted not to do it with reckless abandon, but with controlled abandon under the will of God. But Jonah became abandoned to God again to the point he didn't want to go preach to those people because the Jews hated them. They hated the Jews. He didn't want to see them saved. He didn't want to go to Tarshish, or excuse me, to Nineveh, so he went to Tarshish. But all of a sudden he made a complete turnaround, a 180. And so he did what God called him to do, and as a result, it brought rejoicing. As he said in verse 9, he said, I'll sacrifice unto you with the voice of thanksgiving. I'm going to pay my vow now. I'm coming back to you, God. I repent. I'm going to rejoice. And I believe, at least at that point, Jonah had found the joy. He had been restored to the joy of his salvation. Many Christians today, you've lost the joy of your salvation. And you need to confess the sin that's in your life that's affecting your relationship with God and, and get that correct. But see, returning again to God began with repentance. It brought rejoicing. And then it brought restoration. Friends, I believe before there can be true restoration, there needs to be repentance. And then you can have that process of reconciliation getting things worked out again, and then full restoration. What happened with Jonah? Man, where he got spitted back on the dry land, I don't know if that's right about where he got out of the will of God, but perhaps it was, and he resolved then. It said in chapter 1, verse 3, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. And it said, To arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching I bid thee, and he did it. He followed the will of God. He was faithful to the word of God. And as a result, he fulfilled the will of God. And you know, when we persist in prayer, we make it possible for God to move in miraculous ways in our lives. But sometimes we've got to come to the end of our rope. And so many Christians today have it so good or just good enough they never get desperate. Well, I'm asking you, friend, have you run from God? Has God called you to do something? Are you living out of the will of God? Read chapter 2 of Jonah. Pray. Ask God to restore you, to help you get that fresh start that you need in life, and to be able then to go out and impact this world around you for Christ and be able to say every day, thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.